Alright, this is Vegeta8259 again, and today I'm going to be doing part one of the Master Grade Gundam Epion EW review. And uh, this is what the kit is going to look like straight out of the box, completely unpainted. So these are all the colors that you're going to get. You're going to get this uh, dark red. You're going to get what uh, first appeared to be black, but is more like a uh, dark purplish bluish color and then you're gonna get just a few white parts and just a few yellow parts and you're actually gonna get two shades of gray the entire inner frame is molded in a uh, darker gray and then the backings of the hands and the thighs are gonna be molded in kind of a purplish gray if I'm correct I believe it's the uh, same purplish gray that was used on Master Grade Death Scythe Hell so you get Epion in the package. You also get the heat rod, the weapon Epion is pretty much most famous for. You're going to get a beam sword that's uh, going to have this little power adapter, I guess, that'll uh, plug into Epion's side skirt. You get a flexible wire, which in my opinion is a big improvement. The high grade just came with a, a hollow plastic tube, which will plug into this and then the other end will plug into the beam sword. You'll also get a clear green, very large clear green beam effect part for the heat sword. You will get two different action base connectors. One action base connector for mobile suit mode and another one for mobile armor mode. You'll get two small figures of Miliardo Peacecraft. I almost said Zex Marquis. I had to stop myself. One in standing and one sitting that will go in the cockpit. And just like the other Gundam Wing Master Grades, uh, the hands will be posable only at the thumb, and then the other fingers will have fixed pose fingers that you can swap out. Uh, two uh, gripping hands for the beam sword, two open hands, and then two closed fists. And you'll also get some stickers and decals for this kit. You'll get a small sheet of foil stickers for the eyes, the eyes of the dragons on the feet, cameras on the head, and the camera on the chest. You'll also get a sheet of dry transfer decals, all in gray, well with the exception of these two small red ones down here. And you'll get a large sheet of clear stickers, which are mostly white, and then you've got a few red ones over here. And here's just a quick look at Epion's box art. Um, if you want to get a more in-depth look at the box and its contents, uh, you can always go back and watch the unboxing video I did. Now, whenever I build a kit, I always... Uh, try to remember to take time to actually look at the runners themselves and see if I can find you know those little uh, disconnect tabs that might indicate that a uh, variant may be released in the future and Master Grade Epion actually has them and I found them here disconnecting the uh, beam sword from this runner on this runner I found them here and here disconnecting the sections of the heat rod and on this runner I found them disconnecting the uh, little power cord thing for the uh, beam sword and to me that indicates that there may be a chance in the future of us getting a master grade Epion Pi and if you've never heard of Epion Pi, uh, just do a Google search on it and you'll see. It's relatively new because it's in the new uh, manga novels, but uh, I think there might be a chance of us getting one in the future. Alright, so now on to Epion's articulation. I've uh, taken the liberty of removing the wings just to make things a little bit easier for us. The head is on a double joint. You've got a ball joint up inside the head that can go side to side a little bit forward and back and of course can rotate 360 and then you've got a joint where the neck connects to the torso that can go back about that far so the head can go even farther back can't really go uh, forward very much at all though for the torso we've got a uh, 
actually a single ball joint, as you can see here. On most of the other Gundam wing kits, it was a double ball joint. This little lower section of the torso doesn't really connect anything. It just kind of sits there. But uh, the effect is more or less the same. You're going to have some forward and back rocking motion, some side to side. And he's only going to be able to turn about that far to each side. You're not going to get 360. I've noticed that uh, 360 degree waist rotation is becoming less and less frequent in uh, newer Master Grades. The cockpit hatch can open, although I was a little bit disappointed. I was hoping that this whole red thing would kind of come out and open up, but it's actually just this little yellow flap right here that's going to open up for the cockpit hatch. For the arms, you're going to get an in and out joint that's going to move like so. You also get a little bit of up and down movement as well. The arms are going to come out about that far. And of course you've got 360 rotation there. You've got a double jointed elbow that's going to bend about that far. Although be careful when you're bending it because sometimes if you bend it too far it'll cause the shoulder to dislodge like so. So just be aware of that. It's not really a big problem but It'll just happen if you bend the elbow really, really far. Anyway, uh, these little yellow claws right here come out like so. It's actually on a double joint. And I actually really like this. I think this is a huge improvement over the, uh, the TV version. Because not only do these claws fit further up on the forearm so that they're not blocking whatever's trying to be held in the hand, um, this is just a really nice little smooth... Uh, mechanism they've got here for these and they can go up and pretty much all up and down they don't go side to side at all so I think they did a really good job on these new claws the wrists are on a ball joint the thumb is also on a ball joint and as uh, I mentioned earlier the fingers can be swapped out um, with the different finger sets you can simply unplug the fingers and replace them with a different set, and that's how the hands are going to change position. Each one of these skirt armors is on a ball joint, so they're going to be able to come up and wiggle around. Same thing for the side skirts, they can come up about that far, and the back skirts as well. They don't come up quite as far as the front and sides, but they still have uh, quite a bit of movement, seeing as how they're all on ball joints. The hips are actually a different joint than was used on the, uh, uh, like, Master Grade Shenlong and Death Scythe, for example. This one uh, seems a little bit sturdier, actually. And they're going to come up about that far till they hit the skirt armor. Again, to the back and to the side. And you've got 360 rotation below the hip. The knees are obviously double-jointed. And they're going to give you pretty much a full 180. And you've got some movement in the center of the leg, right here. And that joint's actually going to pop out for the transformation. It'll have a little bit more movement, and I'll show you that later. These fins on the knees can go up and down. This black fin doesn't move, it's stuck in place. The ankles are on a double ball joint, so we've got a joint right here at the top that can go forward and back and side to side, rotate slightly. And then the foot itself is also on a ball joint, so it can rotate and go up and down and side to side. And then there's a joint in the foot where it can go forward a little bit. And then it goes down all the way, obviously for the transformation. And then the little mouths on the dragon heads can open up. Now onto these gigantic wings. Um, the backpack portion is actually pretty small by comparison, as you can see. Um, these little red and gray parts can pivot up and down. The thrusters are not on polycaps, but they are on tiny little ball joints, so they can uh, wiggle around a little bit. Although I find that they do tend to pop off pretty easily, so you'll want to be a little bit careful with those. You've got this hinge right here, which is going to let the wings fold all the way up and back. And then there's a mechanism right here in this black part that allows them to slide up like so. And you'll hear a locking sound when it locks in place. But then again, that's more for the transformation, but you could certainly use it for the uh, robot mode as well. 
and then the wings themselves will be able to come all the way up until this tip of the wing actually touches the backpack and they can go down until they're in neutral position and then the really cool feature of the wings you can grab onto the bottom and the top and pull and they'll automatically uh, kind of fan out like this and you can just push them back in and this little mechanism seems to work pretty well so all of these parts are connected and they all move in unison and when you have both of the wings fanned out and attached to Epion it's actually a pretty impressive effect I think and I was afraid this kit was going to be a little bit back heavy but I honestly haven't had many issues with him uh, standing up even with as you can see the wings are not touching the ground and he's standing up just fine. Uh, you may want to lean him a little bit forward, but honestly he's doing just fine as far as I can tell. So that about does it for the basic articulation of the kit, and I think this is also going to conclude part one. So make sure to come back for part two of the review, where I'll go over uh, the weapons and accessories, the inner frame, the transformation, and we'll finally get to see Epion painted and completed. So with that, I'll see you guys next time.